Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with AJ. He's the founder and CEO of iCracked, which is a worldwide iPhone, iPod, iPad repair and buyback company with over 340 on-demand iTechs in 10 different countries. And he has some amazing back-end data, which no one cares about except for him and other founders, but it's really cool. He was voted Inc. Coolest College Startup of 2012 and Forbes All-Star Student Entrepreneur in 2011. A fun fact about AJ, he helps run a winery with his brother. Um, they have pink panda champagne and a wine that's called Reckless Love. Is that right? Uh, yes, that is delicious. <laughs> it is delicious. And so, AJ, I mean, people often talk about how they're trying to get traction with their idea, try to get sales. They're not sure whether to persist or just cut the losses. And, you know, we often learn our most valuable lessons that allow us to grow and improve when we make mistakes and we overcome challenges, like with any startup. So I wanted to have you talk to the audience because your company is doing really well. I know that obviously you want to keep growing it. But just before talking about some of the successes, what are uh, two of the biggest mistakes that you've made that you could kind of impact us with? Well, I think er your <laughs> Early on, one of our uh, biggest mistakes was was probably not uh, taking ourselves as seriously as uh, we should have. But uh, but with the advice of like uh, mentors and advisors um, that really pushed us to um, follow this and see this through, uh, that that put us on the right track. But uh, I wish I wish someone had told me that there's there's kind of a fallacy behind uh, college education that doesn't relate to the startup world at all, where um, it, I, I kind of wish I had dropped out and uh, and started this thing a year sooner than I did. What, what did you find going on with your college education that you were just sitting there and you were, because you were running the business in college, that you're like, wow, I'm learning so much here, and on this end, not so much. What was that? Well, I, I, start, well, I, was, a, I was a psych, uh, a psychology major and a bio minor, and so I loved my bio classes, and I was kind of just sitting through my um, psychology classes. And it ended up being I would just take my laptop to class, and it looked like I was taking notes. And but I was the only thing I was doing was working on uh, working on the company, which I do give uh, Cal Poly professors like um, major thanks to for understanding that there is something outside of college. And most uh, most professors were actually very supportive of if I had to miss. Um, quizzes or tests or whatever to be doing something with the company. I remember reading somewhere, did they give you credit for something with the company? Talk about yes, that. My, my senior project, I think this is going to get someone in trouble. My senior project was... Well, don't say uh, if it's going to get someone in trouble. Well, my senior project was the iCracked business plan, um, where I, I basically had a business plan that I'd already written um, that I bolted on to a... Um, to a like one or two page document and turned in this like 50 or 60 page document where uh, students generally stress for like six months over the senior project. I had it finished um, in, in like less than an hour. Um, but it's, it, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't want to, un college is an incredible experience and great for networking. Uh, it all depends on what you want to do. If you want to be a doctor, engineer, lawyer, um, then it's the best thing in the world. If you're going to start your own company, it um, it doesn't matter as much. Yeah. So one of them was you would have started your company earlier, or maybe kind of n skipped out on college and done the company. What's another? What's another mis big mistake that you that was painful for you in in the business? Uh, hiring hire, hiring the wrong people because you feel like you you've never hired someone before and you've never fired someone before um, and I think I think it's very easy to bring on the wrong people right at the beginning when you you haven't really figured out how everything works um, but those mistakes tend to have ways to solve themselves because if you hire the wrong person they're typically not going to be around for too long yeah so what was something that you learned from after you made a bad hire um, and that what you do now? because of that like what did you implement like as a system in your business now that you, you know because it's hard early on um, to well actually so so one of my uh, when I first started I thought that it was always a bad idea to hire friends um, and I think I've, I've been quoted saying that I, I think it's a bad idea to hire friends I, I actually disagree with that now um, and I think when you try to go outside of your network um, and hire people 
um, because they're outside of your network. Um, that that wasn't a smart that wasn't a smart uh, idea. And now it's 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 funny. I I the best people we have on our team were great friends that um, that we have a great business relationship now. But uh, I I always thought it was taboo to hire your friends when in, when you you should have done like your due diligence up front with your friends and have incredible friends so they should be the best people to be working with. So do you have to feel if you have a friend on board, do you have to have a special conversation? Because this happens all the time. Obviously, you're, you're yeah. with your brother too, right? So yes, what so kind the, of conversation do you have with them? The conversation is always on the or before um, they decide to join our team. It's always, hey, we might. Um, this I think will be an incredible learning experience for both of us. Um, it, this may we may risk losing the friendship over something going wrong. Um, but I, I mean, if we both go into this full, knowing that. Uh, that's a possibility. Then it kind of takes the edge off things. But if you if you hire the right people and, and you hang out with the right people, um, usually you don't have to have these conversations. Yeah, but it is a risk, right? It, yeah. it certainly it certainly is a risk. But I mean, for for startup founders, they they are literally willing to risk every relationship, their health, their I don't know about families because I don't I don't have. A family outside of my parents and brother and sister, um, but you're you're already willing to risk everything for your company just to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, in some ways too. Like, if you have a friend or family, you can be like brutally honest with them. You know, was there a point where because it was a friend, like you just you were able to kind of lay into each other a little bit more, knowing that? I mean, not taking offense to it, but yeah, I think um, well, you're certainly more comfortable with each other, and you know you should know how each other um, thinks and operates. Um, so I, I, I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, and and once you once you tap, I think it was it was Michael Dell um, that said that it, when he was first starting Dell, he would he would hired as many of his friends as he possibly could, and then when he ran out of his friends to hire, he started hiring his friends' friends and. Uh, and that's that. That looks very similar to what we're uh, what we're doing right now. So we're uh, we're we're looking for incredible people to join our team. Yeah. So, AJ, what's one of the big milestones you were you're especially proud of after overcoming one of these big challenges in the business? Like when you figured out one of these mistakes or big challenges, and then what was a big milestone you hit because of it? Yeah. I think our uh, our big milestone was. Um, was putting our culture and our and our company culture before everything else, um, and we it's it, it, people I don't and from the quote old business world um, where they're stuck in cubicles in uh, in North Dakota or wherever, um, I, people don't uh, old business the old business world doesn't understand startups and how startups can operate on sixteen hours a day with no pay and pizza and a and a beer in the fridge. Um, and so I think the one of the biggest milestones that we made as a company was never sacrificing who we are as a as a young company to go with the the corporate norm, um, and and that's caused us to do things uh, do things differently. Whether it's running our company out of a house or trying to lease a uh, professional football player's fifteen bedroom house to move the company into, uh, which fell through by the way, which we weren't happy about. Um, but it's, I mean, we're having such a good time and... You were going to lease um, a 15, uh, 20 bedroom house for the company to work out of? Yes. Yes. That's we, awesome. We put in a, we put in a offer, um, which apparently was too low. <laughs> so what else do you do to help com- company culture? Because that's so important to you. What else do you, do you implement? Well, I, I think it's a, um, I think paying for... Uh, extracurricular activities, whether it's taking everyone spear fishing for a weekend, or um, or or something like paintball or dinner, or um, or having a uh, a kegerator in the office that at five o'clock we have what's called beer o'clock projects, where um, at like five, six, or seven o'clock, um, I want I want everyone working on what they can be the best in the world at and what makes them happy and. Um, and I think one of the ways we do that is is when we hire people, we don't ever try to pigeonhole them. We're always bringing them on. Saying, or when we're onboarding them, we're like, "What what can you be happiest doing, and where do you think you can make the largest impact?" And that's caused us to really hire for people's minds and how they think versus their background or their uh, a pedigree or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we we have uh, we have an incredible team that. that 
whether it's from college dropouts to people with uh, law degrees, and um, and it's it's how people think that is the most important. Yeah. So, what's one piece of advice you'd give to uh, to make sure a founder knows when they're starting or continue to grow their company? Tr- uh, trust your founder's in- intuition. Um, advisors are great. Advisors also are. Um, have their own reasons for saying things and, and recommending things and different experiences. But at the end of the day, you're, I, it's, it's, you know, in your, in your heart or in your gut, what's right and what's wrong for the company and, and trust that above all. And if you, um, don't ever, don't ever sacrifice that. And whether that's, uh, having to let someone go that you just know you have to, that they're not working out or whether it's hiring someone that has no experience. If you, if you can follow what you actually think will make the company better and stronger and, and believe and don't let anyone uh, dissuade you from that. Cause that is the most, the most important thing that a founder has is, uh, is almost innately knowing the, the decisions that he should make for the company in order to keep it, uh, alive and well. Yeah. And I have one final question for you, AJ, but before I ask it, I want you to tell us a little bit about your business and what you're working on now that's exciting. Yeah, so we are. We started as a uh, iPhone, iPod, and iPad repair company on a college campus and have since grown to 340 iTechs, as we call them. Um, and we were building a, um, a system where it, it, on our website or our mobile site, we want customers to be able to enter their phone number and use their current location. And in real time, we dispatch one of our iTechs to them. And so, um, so we look at ourselves as a solutions provider, whether you have a broken device or you want to sell, um, you want to sell your used, uh, iPhone in your sock drawer. Um, and we're, we're building the system where, um, everything needs to be on demand at the click of a button. And so that's, we're building out this network of iTechs um, where we believe that no matter where you are in the world in the next 24 months, you can press a button and either insure your device against damage, uh, sell it for a new one, buy one off of us, or repair it. And I think uh, I think when you tie that um, all those systems together into this like AAA of your device meets Uber um, efficiency, I think that's a very powerful uh, model. So just to let people know where to find uh, the site, can you uh, just spell it out so people yeah, can... Yeah, so it's, it's just iCracks.com. It's, it's a great uh, domain. <laughs> it is, you know, it, when we had uh, three $3,000 in our bank account, we purchased it for, I think, $3,500. <laughs> the math doesn't work out with that. For some yeah, the, the credit card did, though. Okay. So, uh, we, had, we had won a... Uh, a, a uh, or we got third place at a business competition, which gave us um, a couple thousand dollars, which we uh, we paid off a cyber squatter. So nice. I'm not a huge fan of people who sit on domains and resell them. Yeah. So, AJ, my final question is, what's the best piece of advice you you got from a mentor for your business that was most valuable to you? Because I know you've had a valuable ment- you know, advisors, your dad is an entrepreneur, and Y Combinator. What was one of the best yeah, pieces I- you got? I think the most, uh, actually, the most valuable uh, piece of advice I think came from Paul Graham. I think, yeah, I think it was Paul Graham, where he said, uh, when you're when you're talking to investors or customers or uh, advisors or uh, people on your team, and they tell you no, whether it's if you're trying to raise a round of funding and and uh, an angel or a, a VC firm says no, uh, it's it's believe the no, uh, don't believe the why. And, um, and I think that really, that really helps when you're fundraising or when you're dealing with anything. Cause you, if you know what's best for your company and someone says, Hey, I'm not going to invest in your company. Uh, here's why. Don't, don't believe why they're not investing in the company. Cause if you're correct, they're wrong. And, um, so understand that they said no. Don't try to fight it. Uh, but don't believe why they said no. So do you remember a time when do you, um, actually go back uh, and be persistent with them, or you just move on to another person, or what? What do you do with that? I, I, you never want. I mean, specifically within in uh, raising either angel rounds or um, or institutional rounds. Uh, it's if someone says no, you're never going to convince them they're wrong. With the exception of one of our um, one of our good friends' companies, uh, who 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 the investor said no, and he called him. Uh, Called him late at night, and he said, "You know what? We're we're saying no to your no, 
and um, <laughs> and they actually and they actually ended up. Uh, it was a guy named uh, James Bashira with Crowd Tilt, and they uh, they got a a, a good uh, investment from this from a, a angel firm for telling them now. I love it. We sent out a year now. Well, AJ, I appreciate your time, uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Hey, no problem. It was a pleasure being here.